So I'm just going to tell you a bit about myself, and I'm hoping that from my story and my experiences, that you'll get to learn something. Now, it's funny that I work in television, because for the earlier part of my life, I grew up in a household that did not have a television set. To actually go watch TV, we used to have this neighbor who was a pastor. So that's where most of us would go watch TV. I grew up in Kibira. Ongapena jua Kibira? Yes. I am from number nine, legitimately. So I had to go watch TV at a neighbor's place. And I used to love watching TV, right? So eventually one day, a TV comes home. It's a black and white TV. And I still love watching TV. So I think from that experience, I used to watch all these shows, all these people, all these people and go like, that's what I want to do. And from a, from a young age, I understood that to be on TV, you have to have good language. So in school, I was that person who was very good in English. So from a young age, I really built up on my skills. I realized I'm someone who's very bubbly. When I talk, people listen. It doesn't matter where you're from, right? It doesn't matter where you're from. What matters is how much are you willing to put in to get to where you want to go? Mnanyelewa? Eh? Ah, yeah. So now, basically, when I was in high school, I developed a lot of my writing skills. I leave high school, something happened. There was no money to put me through campus. But I wanted to go to campus. I had passed. There was no money. What to do? I had to get a job. So where do I get a job? I don't have skills. I don't have papers. What can I do? I can write. So simply because all these years I'd spent time building on these skills, I was able to learn my first job, and it was as an editor, yeah? So I became a magazine editor in campus for free, and then now from there, that's how I landed my first job. I remember in campus for the magazine that I worked for, we put Saudi Soul on the cover. So that was back in the day. We were so beat. We were just there. We were passionate. We want to do something. And I look back now, and it's funny because what we did back then has led to where we are right now, right? And something else that I want you guys to know. It doesn't matter how small of an effort you put in today. There's something that I like to call connecting the dots backwards. You may not see it right now, but the day it happens, the day your big moment happens, you'll understand. Kume zile siku nilikuwa nalaga midnight, they were not for nothing. Kume that day that I put in the extra effort, it was not for nothing. Because when you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. When you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. So there I was. So I was the editor of the Insider magazine. I worked there. Now, My job was great. I'd go to a lot of funkies, meet a lot of celebrities. Yeah. We did chat awards. It was a great experience. But it got to a time I realized that I need to grow. Yeah? And that's something that a lot of you will experience in your careers. Dreams change. Today you might say, you know what? I want to be a nurse. But the next day you realize, eh, kumbi am who can manage this clinic. Or you want to be this. Dreams actually do change. And for me, it changed. I got to a point, I was like, print, I think I've really reached the pinnacle of what I can do in print media. So I told myself, what are my strengths? What do I want to do? I'm like, I'm going to do television. And as chance and luck would have it, I got the opportunity to do television. And I landed on a very small TV show that you may have heard about. It's called Straight Up Live. Okay. I used to do Straight Up Live with okay, Ian. So it was you, Manilava. So again, I interviewed Saudi Soul when I was on Straight Up Live. That's a couple of years back. So I did TV. I did Straight Up for a while. And then after I did Straight Up, I landed again. I felt that unrest of, I've done this thing for a while, what next? And that's the thing about great careers. You should, not be, you should not be stagnant. You should always be looking at making yourself better. If you have a skill, improve upon it, build upon it. So for me, there I was, I was a TV host. It was great. I was enjoying it. The show was very well received. I'm sure a lot of you guys used to watch that show as well. And I figured, what do I want to do next? So I realized that, over and beyond just being a TV personality, I wanted to understand the business that is a media. What are these business decisions that impact my show? So I took, I took the time. 
I went and found out who's this person who decides, Tamima, your show is at 5 o'clock. Tamima, your show is being moved to Saturday at 12 noon. I found the person. And again, thanks to preparation, meeting opportunity, I landed a job to be part of KTN's programming department. Now, what programming does, programming determines what you watch, when you watch it. And my message here to you is one and very simple. Please, let's appreciate local content. And when I say local content, think about it this way. When I'm being sent out there to get content, Hollywood content, the Filipino soaps, the Mexican soaps, I've never once met anyone from those countries who's told me, Tamima, eh, we, want you to, we want to buy the real house helps of Kawagware. No, no one has ever asked me that. So we are so busy going to them to buy their content, but they're not buying our content. And it really hit me hard, especially now that I have a child, because I now understand more than ever that it's important for us to tell our stories. If you don't tell the stories of your culture, who's going to tell those stories? So it's you people who have to go out there, meet these people, write their, write their stories, capture them in film. When you promote local, not just in media, across all industries, from fashion, music, finance, you build each other. And that's the most important thing. You need to look to your neighbor on the left, ask them, what do you do? If you came here alone or with your friends, don't just sit with the people that you came with. Network. In any industry, your network is your worth. Whether you are in agriculture, you need to know who gives the best manure. So a key lesson, especially in this stage of life that you're in, whereby you think, oh yes, I'm too cool for everyone. I don't say hi to those people. And what I've learned, I've seen it in my life. The people who are not cool in high school and campus, guess what? They're making the money right now. Those ones who are too cool for life, you meet them on the streets. In fact, sometimes they're embarrassed to say hi to you. Because when it counted, the other people were putting in the work. So don't be that, don't be that person who's too busy, yoloing, you know, you only live once. Be that person who's putting in the work now. Because this stage that you're in in your life, it will make or break your future. So kohayo machache, that's it from me. I hope you've learned something. And uh, we can connect on social media in case you have any questions.